Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Jim Langevin, the Honorable James Sensenbrenner Jr., Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, and the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure, my true pleasure, it's, a thing, it's what people say at introductions and the rest, but today it is a great joy to welcome you to the Capitol for a very, very special occasion. Indeed, it is an historic event. We'll be talking about it in our program, and we will be led in our conversation by a person who has transformed the thinking of members of Congress about equality in our country. For all of us, it is a great honor to serve in the Congress with Congressman Jim Langevin of Rhode Island. From day one, he taught us, he inspired us, and today he will make history, and you know why. Uh, I'm so pleased to see Tony Coelho, our former colleague here, Uh, he led the way on the ADA, working with our majority leader, Steny Hoyer, and it was a bipartisan effort, and I'm so pleased to be here with Congressman Jim, Sens Jim Sensenbrenner, but even more thrilled to be here with Cheryl Sensenbrenner, if I may. Where's Cheryl? Thank you, Cheryl. When Jim Langevin came to the Congress, it was clear he had a very great contribution to make to the Congress of the United States. As a great representative of a, a, a district he was very proud to represent from Rhode Island, he was effective from the start on his legislation and other uh, ideas of leadership that he had. Uh, again, though, by every day that any of us served with him it was an inspiration for us. As I said earlier, he transformed the Congress, he transformed the thinking of members of Congress uh, it is an honor to call him colleague and my privilege to present to you Congressman Jim Langevin of Rhode Island. Speaker Pelosi, thank you so much for those, those very kind words, for your introduction, and for your outstanding leadership. We are here today because under Nancy Pelosi's leadership, she has continued the promise of the ADA. She has continued to make sure that the Capitol complex is fully accessible and inclusive and welcoming to anyone who comes to the United States Capitol to either serve here, to work here, or to visit. Thank you, Speaker Pelosi, for especially completing one of the last major uh, pieces of renovation that needed to be completed in the House chamber and making the Speaker's rostrum completely handicapped accessible. Thank you for your leadership. I also, on this 20th year anniversary of the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act, want to just pause and reflect and thank all those outstanding leaders who made the passage of the ADA possible. I first want to recognize my good friend and colleague, Congressman Steny Hoyer from the great state of Maryland. <laughs> Steny, Steny Hoyer was the, uh, the author and the, the leader who pushed through the, the Americans with Disabilities Act. It was because of his vision his courage, his determination, and his passage, uh, his, his passion for equal rights, uh, for his belief in inclusion, and belief that everyone should have, be able to live up their, to their God-given potential, that the Americans with Disabilities Act finally became law. And Steny, it is in large part because of that passion, and because you made sure that the ADA became law, that it is possible that I am serving here today in the United States Congress. And for that, I will forever be grateful. A 
I also want to thank uh, uh, Jim Sensenbrenner, who is here, the bipartisan uh, sponsor of the ADA and the ADA Amendments Act. I want to thank uh, also Congressman Tony Coelho, a, a giant and a leader, uh, the former Majority Whip in the United States House of Representatives, Tony Coelho, who's in the audience with us. <laughs> great, great leaders like Senator Kennedy and Senator Harkin, ad community advocates like Justin and Yoshiko Dodd, and, and, uh, and so many, so many others. And I thank them for their passion uh, for the, and their leadership. Let me say that it was almost 30 years ago that I became paralyzed as a young police cadet uh, walking into a police locker room and a police officer's gun accidentally went off and, and went through my neck and severed my spinal cord. And my life that day changed forever. And as I lay in a hospital bed wondering what my life was going to be like, what my future offered, what opportunities would I have to, to live out a fulfilling life, I took great inspiration from other people with disabilities, particularly those with spinal cord injuries, who had gone on to overcome their obstacles and their challenges and build a life for themselves as, as lawyers and teachers and engineers and doctors and so many other fields of endeavors, to have families. And I said, you know, I can do it too. And because of my family who is here today, my mom and my brother Rick and Joanne, the inspiration that they gave me and my community that rallied behind me at a time when I needed it the most, it inspired me to give back and, and, and go into public service. And then today, as I serve in the United States Congress, representing my home state of Rhode Island, who I'm so grateful to my constituents who have time and again placed their trust in me to be their voice and their vote in Washington. I can't tell you how humbled and excited and honored I am today because of Nancy Pelosi's leadership and Steny Hoyer and so many others who made sure that the Capitol complex was completely inclusive that I am so honored to make history today as I take to the speaker's rostrum and take up the gavel and serve as speaker pro tem in presiding over the United States House of Representatives today. I am so honored and I just hope that as I took inspiration from others almost 30 years ago, that now after the ADA has been passed and the speaker's rostrum has been made accessible, I hope some other young person who is facing perhaps similar circumstances that I faced or other people with disabilities, or anyone who has challenges in their life, that they'll see this and know that they can succeed too and realize their goals and their dreams. That is what the promise of the ADA offers, and I am so honored to be a part of this day today. Thank you. And if I could, just one last thing. As we celebrate the 20 year passage of the ADA today, Let's not just celebrate successes, but let's look at this as a time of a call to action to continue our work because there's still so much left undone. We are not truly inclusive as a society until we have solved the problems of unemployment for people with disabilities, where we've made transportation accessible, where we have made affordable, accessible housing available to people with disabilities, and also that we finally, not only as a nation, continue to lead on, on disabilities issues, but that we also, that we also continue to, uh, to work in the international community and pass the UN uh, Conference on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which is so vitally important to our work. Thank you all very much, and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, United States Representative from Wisconsin, the Honorable James Sensenbrenner, Jr. Thank you very much. Today we are here to celebrate the success of bipartisanship. And one of the reasons why the ADA passed by an overwhelming margin 20 years ago and when the Supreme Court didn't get it, the amendments passed by an overwhelming margin two years ago is because Republicans and Democrats have gotten together to do the right thing. I always view the ADA and its amendments and its implementation as a triple win. It's a win for disabled people because it opens the door to employment, it opens the door to accessibility, it opens the door to transportation. It's a win for the employment community because there are over 50 million people whose talents are out there 
that can be applied productively uh, to help make a company profitable, to help government serve the people better, uh, and it's a win for the taxpayers because as disabled people leave types of public assistance and get jobs and earn money and pay taxes, uh, the taxpayers are ahead of the game. There are no losers when we open up the doors with disabilities. Now, what I can say is that this Congress and its predecessors have been criticized for being too partisan, and that we are upon occasion. But very often the American public get the wrong impression that all we do is fight amongst ourselves because compromise and accomplishment doesn't increase TV ratings and doesn't sell newspapers. Folks, this is an accomplishment. It's an accomplishment over the last 20 years, and it will be an accomplishment in the future with bipartisan support. And it's an accomplishment because everybody knows it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Majority Leader of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Steny Hoyer. Thank you very much. Now, he asked me to do so at the end of my remarks, but I'm going to do so at the beginning of my remarks uh, to accommodate uh, Jim Langevin, which is reasonable to do. Jim Langevin, who wanted to say just a couple of more things. Steny, thank you once again. Um, there were so many people who had a hand in, in making this happen. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Catlin O'Neill of the speaker's staff, uh, and uh, who is really spearheaded this project and really made it her own in so many ways. I want to recognize the House Clerk, uh, Lorraine Miller, and uh, Deputy Clerks, Bob Reeves and Deborah Spriggs. Let me also thank the, the House Parliamentarian, John Sullivan, who prepared me for this, uh, uh, this big day. I want to recognize architect of the Capitol, Stephen Ayers, uh, along with Perry Caswell and Carlos Elias, uh, and the entire a uh, AOC staff, uh, as well as uh, I'd like to recognize the, uh, the late Don White, uh, who was instrumental in getting this project off the ground. We remember him today as well. Also, former CAO uh, Dan Baird, acting CAO uh, Dan Strodel, uh, Nick Gardner and his team, the Sergeant at Arms, Bill Ivengood, uh, Bill Sims, and Ted Daniel, uh, and the entire team. This was really a collective effort, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank all of those people. Thank you. That was an accommodation to me, so I didn't forget it as well. What a wonderful day this is. My lawyer down there is vociferous. July 26th. 1990, sometime after July 4th, 1776. One of the themes that I have been uh, talking about this last week has been that America started as a promise of full inclusion and equal opportunity. The pursuit of happiness was perceived to be given by God to all and not to be impeded. But what we certainly know about American history was that although Thomas Jefferson wrote those words in 1776, and we repair to them almost all in all the great events of our country, we have not realized them fully. And therefore, periodically, we have addressed our laws so that we would do so. Jim Langevin referred to me as the author of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Jim, with all due respect, that's not accurate. Uh, I am not the author of the Americans with Disabilities Act. There were literally, I'm sure, hundreds of authors of the Americans with Disabilities Act who worked over a decade uh, to make more real the promise, to put in language uh, what others have done uh, in the 13th and 14th and 15th Amendments, uh, what others did uh, uh, in the amendment which recognized the ability of those of you 
who had a disability, and that disability was you were women. And we said in the early part of the last century, that's ridiculous. All men should have meant and should have incorporated all men and women are created equal and endowed by their creator. And so uh, we made women full partners in this democracy. We're still working on that, of course, and we are still working on making individuals with disabilities full partners. Uh, but in 1965, we saw that we hadn't completed the job and that Martin Luther King's uh, hope to be free, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last, had not been realized, and we passed additional legislation to do so. And then, some quarter of a century later, finally, we adopted legislation that said those with disabilities are incorporated in that pursuit of happiness as well. Jim Sensenbrenner has recognized that as a bipartisan effort. I want to recognize my partner in that effort as, a, I guess, Steve, a sort of a publisher, perhaps, if not an author. Uh, we helped publish, and there were a lot of publishers. As a matter of fact, I've got a feeling that almost everybody in this hallowed hall was a publisher. I know Mr. Markey was. But Steve Bartlett, a Republican from Texas, Steve Bartlett and I, at the instance of Tony Quello and uh, uh, Tom Foley and uh, Bob Michael and others, uh, worked uh, almost every day for months and months and months with some of you in this room who I will not start to mention because uh, Patricia Wright will demand time if I do that so that we could recognize a more perfect union, a union that was more inclusive, a union that was, as Martin Luther King Jr. urged us, living out more perfectly the promises at its inception and through its history. What a proud day this will be when Jim Langevin takes to the rostrum. You've heard me quote the Josh Groban he didn't write it, but sings it so well. Uh, you lift me up. You lift me up uh, to uh, stand on mountains. You lift me up to walk on stormy seas. Uh, I am strong when I stand on your shoulders. You lift me up, and the song says, to more than I can be. But I asked Josh Groban to change that, because I don't know that even God can change us to more than we can be, but he can change us and encourage us and provide us with the opportunity to be all that we can be. And a mechanical device that we call in the bill a reasonable accommodation will lift up Jim Langevin, first to the first level, then he'll go to another lift and it will lift him to the second level and he will go behind the rostrum, pick up the gavel, and preside over the House of Representatives, fully able to do so. My granddaughter is eight years old today. But before I tell you the story about my granddaughter, I want to recognize one other person. She wasn't there earlier today, and we had a reception, but I want to recognize her today. Bobby Silverstein, uh, who was so critically important to Tom Harkin, the principal coordinator, uh, but I want to mention another person who was with me every step of the way, who helped coordinate uh, those five committees and numerous subcommittees, Ed, that we dealt with, and that's Melissa Shulman. And I want to thank her for her efforts. And I want to thank all of you for the courage you have displayed, because the real authors, the real publishers, were those of you who are challenged through no fault of your own, but by the vagaries of fate. And through your courage, you came forward 
and you said to all the members of the Congress, we have something to contribute. We are not disabled. In fact, we are abled. What you see may be a disability. And of course, with some of us, you don't see that disability. But I was starting to tell you about that eight-year-old little girl who lives in Cary, North Carolina, where I was yesterday. And it so happened I picked up off the, uh, the coffee table uh, of my daughter uh, a little book, a, a Hallmark book. You've seen them that have these really good sayings. And I think God's finger was pointing to it as I leafed through that book. And I saw from I Wish For You, gentle reminders to follow your heart, this comment. May you never allow what you can't do to interfere with what you can do. That's what the Disabilities Act is all about. Thank you all for making it possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the Speaker of the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi. Already been introduced. <laughs> Thank you all. This has been quite an exciting week and especially an exciting day today. As you know, we have what we think is the best possible way uh, to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the passage of the ADA. With kudos to our distinguished majority leader, our former majority whip, Mr. Coelho, and our colleagues who are here on both sides of the aisle, uh, and in the Senate, Senator Harkin and Senator Dole, for their leadership. This has been bipartisan and bicameral, both in the passage and then uh, the amendments to uh, uh, correct what the Supreme Court did not see, but we knew it was the right way to go. Right, Mr. Sensenbrenner? Right. And I want to say about Mr. Sensenbrenner that he has been a champion on this issue relating to the ADA, but he has been a champion on every issue that relates to civil rights in our country. We have been blessed on the Judiciary Committee to have his leadership. I've heard him testify time and again, and it always makes me very, very proud to serve with him in Congress when he starts talking about civil rights in our country. Thank you. <clears throat> So in the course of events, you, last week we announced that we were going to be here now. This morning you had a press conference. Later today, people will gather at the White House. And between now and then, uh, we will go, Mr. Langevin will go to the floor to make history. And later in the day, when all of the members are back, we will pass a resolution. And the resolution will say, the ADA fulfills the nation's goal of equality and opportunity, independent living, economic self-sufficiency, and full participation for Americans with disabilities. Indeed, over the past 20 years, the ADA has transformed our nation, bringing change to the workplace, to our transportation systems, as Mr. Sensenbrenner indicated, buildings and services to all aspects of our daily life. It has stood as a shining example of progress for all of the world to follow. It has made America more accessible, for all, and all, all Americans are better off. Uh, some of the things that were happening outside that led to this, Mr. Quello in Iyer Californians in 1981, I was chair of the California General Crowd, he was the leader in this issue. We established what we thought was the first disabilities caucus in a state party in the country. In 1980, just around that same time, the Pope, Pope John Paul, declared 1980 the year of this, the disabled. The your, so why I'm here to thank all of you for what was going on on the outside to make what happened on the inside of Congress possible. Uh, with your education of the public, with your intolerance and insistence on change, and intolerance of the status quo, all of you should take a high level of satisfaction in what you did to make the ADA possible and make this day possible. It's a liberation. It was a liberation for people. Stanley quotes the Declaration of Independence. This was liberating for people. When I was sworn in as Speaker of the House, there was much to do about the first woman Speaker of the House. 
Uh, I said in my remarks then that this honored the heritage and hope of our country, which is equality for all. Today is another day that honors the heritage and hope of our country, equality for all. Because in just a few moments, Jim Langevin will make history by being a first. And he will do it with all of his characteristic dignity. He will do it because as he acknowledged Jim Ayers and to Tip O'Neill, as I say, Tip O'Neill's granddaughter, Catlin O'Neill, uh, our, our clerk, Lorraine Miller, so many others as has been acknowledged so beautifully by Jim Langevin, uh, had this done in a way that shows the rest of the world it can be done, and it's done not only to liberate some, but also, again, to enhance the participation of all of us. There's a reason Jim Langevin is first, it's because of who he, who he is, again, the caliber of his leadership, the dignity and modesty of this man in spite of the greatness that he has brought to the Congress. And so it is now my honor to give Jim Langevin the gavel, which he will take to the floor, and he will preside and make history. to see it on the screen is my understanding as Jim goes to the floor to make history and make progress for the American people. Thank you, Jim. Don't call me out of order. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our speaking program. The Honorable Jim Langevin will preside over the House from 2 o'clock to 3.30 this afternoon. All guests are invited to remain in Statuary Hall to view floor proceedings. Closed captioning and interpretation will be available here. Any guests that wish to view the proceedings from the House Gallery, please gather by the signs marked Escort to House Gallery, located in the south hallway leading to the House floor. Guests will be escorted as space allows. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Okay.